Thanks so much to Emily Hocking for getting our Christmas carols off to an amazing start. So welcome to Christmas carols at Exeter Network Church uh, 2021. It's an evening where we hear the Christmas story, where we hear personal story, where we sing carols and songs that celebrate the fact that God sent his son Jesus into the world as a vulnerable baby. Now, if you're visiting this evening, you're so welcome. We hope you enjoy your time with us. It's our prayer that we might all experience something of God's love for us and receive some hope in these difficult times. And we're going to begin with a well-known carol and uh, singing together. And although we're encouraging face masks, we're also encouraging singing. So let's start by singing this carol, O Come, Will Ye Faithful, uh, O Come, Will Ye Faithful, Come to Bethlehem. Shall we stand and let's sing together? So it's a time for celebration, people. So feel free to use your voices, use your bodies if you want, if you're feeling the groove, a little hip sway, that's an ad, I think. Let's start with this. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Let's say, stay standing for a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love the world so much that you send your son Jesus to be born as a baby to become one of us. Thank you that you experienced all the joys, temptations, and sufferings that we do, but that he also showed us perfectly what God is like. Thank you that that same Jesus is with us now by his spirit in this place. Father, would you open our hearts again to the Christmas story and the Christmas message and the power that it has to transform lives completely. Please sow in our hearts an unshakable hope in these anxious days. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Do have a seat. We're going to hear the first part of the Christmas story, and it's going to be told by uh, a character I think you'll recognize on, on screen. So if you look at the screen. Some words from a prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light of those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of a government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on, forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Okay, let's stand again and sing our second carol. Uh, it's a little town of Bethlehem. It reminds us that Jesus was born in a particular time and a particular place. Let's stand together. Verses 18 to 25. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she found, was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. 
Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But before he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until, until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you'll notice in these readings that uh, angels appear quite often in this story, and we're going to sing another song together, which includes angels. Let's stand to sing the first Noel.
So do have a seat. And um, there is a carol that regularly tops uh, the charts in terms of uh, f people's favorite carol. And uh, I think Adam and Rich and Jacob are going to sing it to you now. I guess you'll probably recognize it. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices for yonder a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night was born oh night divine oh night oh my The next reading is from the Gospel of Luke, 
chapter 2, the birth of Jesus and shepherds surprised by angels. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town together. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them, all about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks, Rob. Let's stand to sing another carol, and it's a classic snowy carol, which one which has an amazing question for us at the end. So let's stand to sing In the Bleak Midwinter.
do have a seat. So we've been hearing the Christmas story, we've been singing the Christmas story, but uh, it just remains a nice story unless it's connected to us here in the 21st century. So I wanted to invite Nathan Hill to come and give his story. Let's welcome Nathan as he comes. Okay. Good to see you. And you, mate. And uh, Nathan has had quite a year. So, um, and he's been telling me his story, and it's got it's got some really important dates in the last year. So today's December the twelfth. If you think back a year, Nathan, to December the twelfth, twenty twenty, what kind of state were you in at that point? Um, yeah, this time last year, exactly today, I was uh, I was hospitalised. Um, I was 20% away from being disabled, uh, I was nine stone, and I was coming off the back end of a 25-year drug habit and alcoholism. Um, so yeah, I, was, I, was, I couldn't feel my legs, I lost all use of my legs from a car crash. Um, and I was broke, busted, disgusted, and couldn't be trusted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually. So you were at your lowest ebb? Lowest, that, lowest yeah. of my lowest ebb. Uh, with all, like I said, I've been an active addiction for 25 years. Um, you know, I've been involved in some, some nasty things with gang, gang crime. Um, I've been stabbed twice. I've been shot at in a drug deal gone wrong, uh, kidnapped. Yeah, I, I, I've been involved in things that you're going to see in the movies. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm living proof. <laughs> well, so a year ago you were there. And then between, between that December the 12th and the end of March... That was, a, that was also a tough time, wasn't it? It was, it was. I, I got put into um, a detox unit um, on the 14th of December because I had a back operation, an emergency back operation on the 13th. I got admitted into hospital on the 12th. They had to detox me for 24 hours before I could have the operation. Um, and after the operation, I started fitting, uh, withdrawing from alcohol and okay. the drugs. So that's when they admitted me into a detox unit. And I come out on Christmas Eve and then I moved to Exeter, and that was the start of my recovery. But for the first three months, it was, it was painful. It was, okay. yeah, I've just come off a back end of a 25 year mayhem life, and I've got to deal with all the wreckage from my past. You know, my, my kids wasn't in my life. I broke up from my partner, um, lost family members, lost friends. Okay. Yeah, it, was, it was daunting. It was bad. And then you were, you were sorting out your debt with some help? And yes. what happened there? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I was massively in debt, you know, because of my drug habit and, you know, there's no excuse for that, but it's, it's just the disease of addiction, you know. Um, I moved into a recovery house, a 12-step recovery house, and my support worker was seeing how much pain I was in due to the stress of the, the, uh, you know, all this debt. And a debt agency is called for the house I was living in and just couldn't go up with it, just couldn't see no way out. Um, you know, luckily enough, I got put on to... A very good friend of mine now, Liz Camp, who's um, you know who's been a godsend to me, and she managed to <laughs> get me out of debt, which is a blessing, and I really appreciate you for that, and I appreciate the ENC. Yeah, it's for, uh, and a bit. so uh, Liz came into your life through Christians yep. Against Poverty, yep. and then March the 30th, something very significant happened. Yeah, well, I was I was asking Liz, you know, can I, I want to give back, I want to do something just just to say thanks, and she, 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 she mentioned um, another good friend of mine, which people think he's my father, <laughs> Tim Harrell. Um, yeah, so she, she got me connected with Tim, and I started meeting up with Tim, and, and Tim invited me down to a place called Crosslines where we feed the homeless every Tuesday, and I went down midday to help him do some DIY work, and um, I didn't do no DIY, I was just asking him questions about the Christian faith. And uh, yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, and he, he just said it to me, he just said, you, you want to become a Christian, didn't you? And I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Um, and I didn't think it was that easy. Um, I said the prayer with Tim, and I left him with a little spring on my step, like, yeah, I'm a born again Christian. <laughs> and I was master 30. So it was quite simple in, in a lot of ways. It was, it was, the thing I like with Tim, you know, like I was, Tim wasn't trying to, convinced me. I was asking Tim the questions about the Christian faith. You yeah. know, I thought you had to go to a, like a college or or something like that to become a Christian to get baptized. I didn't I didn't know it was that easy to become a Christian. And, okay. Yeah, and I just um, I remember walking back to my house after leaving Tim, and Tim gave me the Lord's prayer card, and 
I was just like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a born again Christian. Okay, you know? there nice. you go. Yeah. And you and you did uh, something called the Alpha course a bit later. Which, yes. Was that a help? A, a massive help. Um, if, you, if none of you have done the Alpha course here, I'm not here to sell it. I'm here to advise you to get involved with the Alpha course. <laughs> um, no, it's brilliant. I, I love the Alpha course. It was, you know, it, I, I was sold. Um, the third video on one onwards, I was sold. Um, I kind of realise now, from the third video one, it talks about Jesus knocking on a door, and it says like Revolutions chapter 3, 20, I think, when mm -hmm. he's knocking on a door, and from that video onwards, I kind of thought, wow, like Jesus has been in my life all my life, I just refuse to let him in. Yeah. And I believe now, when I got hospitalised, I reckon it's, but I know, he saved me there, it's just now I know yeah. how and why. Amazing, so amazing. The Alpha course is brilliant. I don't know about Jenny Stoneman and a couple of people now, Chris and Hillary, and we're still friends now from it. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Excellent. So that, uh, you told me about another date as well, September 26th. Yeah. That's really important for more than one reason, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, September the 26th, six years ago, my mother died in my arms, um, which kind of, it kind of, yeah, it, it made me. I was on a downward spiral anyway, but it made me go even more mm. back into the life of, of madness. And it was, it was quite a powerful uh, thing to witness. Um, you know, and seven days after that, my nan died in my arms as well. So right. it, was, it was quite crazy, yeah. So, um, but anyway, then six years later, last year, I got arrested on the 26th uh, for the CBS charge, um, which I kind of look back on now and I think, you know, that was, that was, I think that was my mother kind of saying, no, sort your life out. <laughs> Um, and also, I got baptized on the 26th this year. So, amazing. Yeah, amazing. It's, it's, it's brilliant, yeah. So, the 26th is powerful, man. Yeah. It's nice. And one other day is also really important to you, which is Christmas Eve. So, Christmas Eve last year, what, what was that about? Um, Christmas Eve last year was the day I come out of detox. Um, it was the day. Yeah, and yeah, I realised I needed to sort my life out because I come out of detox and I was just over, yeah, just over nine stone. Um, I spent two weeks with my kids for Christmas, uh, which was not, you know, which was a bit of a blessing, and uh, you know, I'm grateful for that. But yeah, Christmas Eve is my you can, this coming up to Christmas now is going to be my one year sobriety, free from all drinking drugs. Amazing, so, yeah. amazing. So, yeah, so, yeah, okay. so, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So uh, it's been a most extraordinary year for you, really. Absolutely. And yeah. and the changes that uh, that you've seen in your own life that other people have seen in your life are absolutely yeah, it's, it's, extraordinary. It's, it's been amazing. It's just you know, Jesus has entered my life and he's, he's doing for me what I can't do for myself. And you know, my kids are back in my life. I'm seeing my kids every weekend. They're back in my life. I've got I've got my my, my family back in Cardiff. They're back in my life. Um, just people's even messaging me on Instagram, asking me to pray for them. You know, that's 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 powerful, man. Okay, that's, that's, that is, that's, powerful. That is powerful. Yeah, asking asking me like a thug to pray for them. Excellent. <laughs> Let's hear it for Nathan, guys. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Nathan, for sharing your story. Uh, we are going to hear the last part of um, the Christmas story, and Adam's going to tell it, and then Joe is going to come and speak for a short while. I see my crown for best-looking person with a beard and hat has been taken. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the last reading um, is from Matthew chapter 2, um, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Uh, well, just before I get to speak to you, uh, would you like to just stand up for a moment and say hello to somebody around you that you don't know terribly well? Uh, just take a moment for that. Okay, have a seat. <laughs> well, there's going to be um, time at the end of this gathering to um, continue on your conversations over a few Christmas drinks and a mince pie. Um, but for now, I have a question for you, and that question is this. What are you hoping for this Christmas? What are you hoping for this Christmas? John and I were clearing out our attic a few months ago. <laughs> Yay! Um, and we came across a little piece of paper, and we realized that it was... Um, a list that we'd asked Bart to write, our son, when he was about seven, um, of what he would like for Christmas. And there were only two things written on this list. One, chocolate. The other, elastic bands. And to this day, I have no idea why Bart wanted elastic bands for Christmas. I must ask him one of these days. Um, but that's what he was hoping for. <laughs> Bless him. Uh, and it made me think about hope. What is it that we're hoping for? And a definition of hope in the dictionary is this. Hope is an optimistic state of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. It's an anticipatory emotion. And in my own words, I would say, hope is a choice to trust that good is coming before it has arrived. And I absolutely love that carol that we heard sung for us tonight. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. It seems to me we are all in need of a thrill of hope. <laughs> Some of us are utterly exhausted um, by sickness and loss. But I should think nearly all of us are weary. We're weary of distancing. We're weary of living fearfully. We're, living, we're weary of uncertainty and isolation. We're weary of caution. And I am weary of sticking a stick a long way up my nose and twizzling until I sneeze. <laughs> So for many of us this year, our expectations have not been met. This last year has been a year um, where things have been disrupted and plans have been de delayed. It wasn't what we were imagining or hoping for, for many of us. And in the story we've heard read to us tonight, we meet Joseph, this man who was um, fully expecting to marry this beautiful young woman, Mary. And we cut in on the story where his hopes have been shattered, where he finds out that she's pregnant and he is not the father. 
And Matthew's account of this story is wonderfully understated because it simply says Joseph was a just and upright man. And not wanting her, Mary, to suffer public disgrace, he planned to break off the relationship quietly. But in those words, there surely must have been shock and loss and disappointment. This was not what he had been hoping for. He must have felt so confused, so let down, so disorientated, even angry. Yet, this, it turns out, is the place where God is at work. This is the moment where God breaks in on the story. Do not be afraid. Trust me. God, not far away, not up there somewhere, but breaking in at the point where things are dark and uncertain, breaking in on Joseph's dreams, breaking in on a dark and uncertain world as Emmanuel, God with us. They they will call him Emmanuel. What are you hoping for this Christmas? This is not what we were expecting. But could this be a moment and the very place where God is at work? A moment for God to break in. In Luke's account, we meet Mary as her life is turned upside down. Nothing will be what she thought she wanted. It must have been like the old days when you banged the side of the telly because the picture had gone weird. Do not adjust your set. This is the new normal, Mary. (laughs) It isn't what you were expecting. It isn't what you had in mind. And again, in Luke's account, we get this wonderfully understated verse. Mary, who was engaged to Joseph and was with child, sets out on this grueling journey to register as part of a census-enforced by the occupying Romans. So not only is she facing the rumors, the shame, the unease between them now, but she has to make this horrendous journey. We're talking 80 or 90 miles across difficult terrain. It makes your uh, Duke of Edinburgh look like a stroll. And when they arrive after this horrendous journey, There's nowhere for them to stay. And she ends up giving birth on a cold, hard floor alongside a few goats, a chicken, a donkey. So this was not the engagement she had been hoping for. Which wine shall we have at the reception had turned into the terrifying prospect of giving birth as a virgin where the only one to administer any pain relief was a chicken. The account says she gave birth (laughs) and laid the baby in a feeding trough. The angel had said she would be blessed among women. This was not how she had imagined that would look. Yet, this is where hope is born. Could it be that in the midst of plans and expectations in tatters, hope is stirring? Then we meet the sheep herders watching these flocks in the dead of night. What, I wonder, were they hoping for? Absolutely nothing. They didn't have plans. They weren't dreaming dreams. They were surviving. They were working to stay above the breadline. They were working to try and pay taxes to the Romans. But again, the unexpected breaks in on them. This is again where God breaks in, terrifying, blinding light flooding across the hillside. The hope of a savior. They'd given up on that one. 
good news of great joy for all people. Could it be true? A saviour, not sweeping in with military might or political power or royal splendour, if you've pinned your hopes on these this year, good luck to you. No. This saviour comes as a baby, vulnerable, fragile, weak, familiar with suffering, danger and uncertainty. Yesterday, I was with the two Syrian families that we have hosted as a church over the last couple of years. And we were reminded again that they actually have lost everything. They know what it was to flee from their homes and watch their country devastated by war. And Jesus and his family, before he was even two years old, likewise, were forced to flee for their lives. And if you know about the life of Jesus, you will know that he chose to experience the extreme of human suffering. Not to sail through life in a protective bubble. So if you've experienced extremes of loneliness or sickness or stress this year, He knows. He knows. Maybe, like the shepherds, you're not hoping for much this Christmas. Hope has fizzled out like one of those damp campfires. But what if, of all the people God chooses to show up for, what if he comes to you with good news of great joy? You see, even the magi, researchers, astrologers, academics, must have had their expectations blown apart. They had made this long journey, and the account tells us that they were bursting with joy when they realized they'd arrived. But surely this wasn't what they were expecting to find. The king... Not couched in palatial accommodation, not in royal finery, but this child playing in the dust. This child wailing as they bump their head on the corner of one of Joseph's coffee tables. (laughs) We call them wise men. And that actually is what they are. Because they don't turn around and leave. They fall down and worship. This wasn't what they were expecting. But they know they have found what they were looking for. If you remember back to last Christmas, the vaccine was what we were pinning our hopes upon. And don't get me wrong, I have uh, my booster booked for Tuesday. And I'm so grateful But when our lives are disrupted and when we are disorientated, it it makes it all the more obvious that we are in need of a hope that is deep and lasting and true. It becomes clear that whoever you are, from a shepherd to a magi and everybody in between, we all need a saviour. We are realizing, perhaps more than ever before, the fragile state of the world that we live in. And we're realizing the fragile state that we are in. What are you hoping for this Christmas? You see, hope becomes more and more powerful in the hardest of times. Hope is only a thing when you are facing up to a shortfall. Only Jesus loves us enough to break in on that mess. (laughs) 
He gives, he gives life meaning and purpose. He reconnects us with our creator. He reintroduces us to our heavenly father. He lifts off us the burden of the shortfall. So what is the hope of Jesus? It is that he mends broken lives in the present and that he will renew everything utterly in a heavenly future. I was wandering around a museum in London a few years ago and I came across this. It's a Japanese work of art. It is hugely valuable. And it is, in fact, made up of the pieces from broken vases and pots that have been glued together with pure gold. And we've heard stories tonight of how Jesus breaks in on the present and begins to mend and heal our broken lives. He does that with his love. And he gives us his Holy Spirit like a deposit for the more that is coming. Because he is the king of the kingdom of heaven where there is no crying, no sickness, no death. And he invites us into that kingdom starting now and forever. And if that isn't hopeful, I don't know what is. It sounds to me like the hope that I need at exactly a time like this one. Five hundred years before the coming of Christ, one of the prophets said this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I have set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Come home, O prisoners of hope. This very day I am declaring that I will restore double to you. Come home, O prisoners of hope. I wonder, what are you a prisoner of after a year like this one? Fear, anxiety, disappointment, anger, loss. What would it feel like to become a prisoner of hope. You just can't get away from it. <laughs> you carry it round with you wherever you go. Come home, O oh prisoners of hope. It all starts where our story ended, with the Magi falling down to worship King Jesus. So as I end, let me read again that verse from that most fantastic carol. (laughs) A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine, the night when Christ was born. So Jacob's going to sing to us now. So why not take a minute to think about anything that struck you from tonight? And then John's going to come and help us pray as we close. Come thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our sins and fears release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all thou earth thou art. 
feel desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Yeah. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring, by thine own eternal spirit, ruling all our hearts alone. By thine all sufficient merit, raise to us thy glorious song. Thanks, Jacob. Let's stand to pray, shall we? So I want to pray a couple of prayers, and the first may be a prayer where you just uh, know that you would like to step into a life of faith, and it may be uh, that that's something you've never done before, and as Nathan was saying earlier, it's very simple, that God is only a prayer away. So if you'd like to pray this prayer, which goes around thank you and sorry and please, then uh, do pray this in your heart with me. So, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending him to be one of us so that you could bring us to you. Father, I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong and for living my life without you, but I want to turn towards you now. Please help me with your power and your love to follow you all the days of my life. For your name's sake, amen. Amen. And just for everyone here, as Joe was talking about hope, and you may want to ask God to plant hope in your life in a fresh way, then if you would like to receive that, uh, I'm going to pray. And it, often it's good, and we do this in our church a lot, to make a physical sign to God, and it may be you want to put your hands out in front of you or put your hand on your heart, or some like to kneel. That's often a helpful way to pray. And I'm going to pray that God sends his Holy Spirit to bring us hope. So, Father, would you send your Spirit on your people? Would you come and fill our hearts with hope? Would you come and inhabit our lives in a fresh way? Would you make us um, really alert to the good that you're bringing from the future into our present? Fill us with overflowing hope this Christmas time and for all time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing our last carol. There are opportunities to be prayed for some more, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But let us sing our last carol. It's a biggie. It's joy to the world.
Thank you guys, you've done absolutely magnificently. Let's just remain standing for a second. Oh, you're gonna clap again, aren't you? Yeah, okay, come on then. I'm gonna say a blessing in a moment, which is also the sign for uh, Christmas drinks and mince pies in a moment. But I just wanna say, if you would like to find out a little bit more about the Christian faith, there is a booklet in front of you on the, on the, uh, in the pews. It's called Why Christmas. You're very welcome to take that away with you. It tells you a little bit about what Christians believe about Christmas and about the Christian faith. And if you would like to do the Alpha course, which Nathan was telling us about, there's one starting in mid-January, and you're so welcome to take one of these flyers as well, and it'll tell you all about it. It's a really easy way of coming and asking your questions in a really congenial setting over a meal. And... Um, do take that, and if you want to come, do sign up. That'd be great. Or if you have friends who would like to come, do invite them. Okay, so let's finish with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if you would like anybody to pray with you for any reason, particularly if you're unwell, and we love to pray with people who are unwell, and we see God at work in people's lives bringing health, if you would like some, some people to pray, there'll be some people to pray just around here at the front. You can just sidle up and say, would you pray for me? And they have the word prayer written around their necks. It's not a tattoo, it's just a lanyard. But you'll, you'll spot them. And um, if you would like prayer, then do just come and gather with those people and they will pray with you. Otherwise, have a lovely time having some Christmas drinks and some uh, mulbine and mince pies. I can see my wife is making a sign at me. What does this mean? Oh. Well, I just felt there might be a few people here who have found this year they've suffered with disappointment. And if that's you um, and you really do need uh, some help to just invite hope back into your life after this year, then we would really love you. Just come and ask one of us. We'd love to pray for you. And also beforehand, we were praying um, for this gathering, and it just felt like there might be one or two who have particularly had, had a dream um, that has been sort of snatched away from them through this, through this year. So again, if, if that's something you recognize and that resonates with you, then don't hesitate. We'd love to pray for you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so that is uh, Christmas carols uh, done for this week. There's family Christmas carols next week at 4 o'clock. You're so welcome to come, bring all kinds of people. Uh, we will be continuing to celebrate the Christmas story. If you would like prayer, please come forward. If you'd like Christmas drinks and mulled wine, mince pies and so on, do go through the door over there, follow the lights up the alleyway there, and you'll find it at the end of the, end of the lights. God bless you. Have an amazing week. Have a very happy Christmas.